Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are once more taking a look at the tropics where we now have two new tropical storms since we last talked yesterday, as predicted. Alright, now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that either of the two other systems, not the ones that are obviously already tropical storms, but any of the other two will become named storms? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know why and which one you're talking about, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now first things first, like always, we're going to take a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and the one offshore of Africa isn't showing up yet because there isn't a disturbance actually there yet. It's a future forecasted disturbance, so on the five-day, we will see that. As you can see, we have Paulette and Rene. I think that's how you say Rene. Yeah, it's not Reem, so I, I'm assuming Rene. Uh, but Paulette's looking a little bit better than Rene right now. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We have 20% chance there uh, for the one heading towards the East Coast. We'll also take a look at what that one's going to do in the future. Lots and lots of uh, stuff to talk about today. Now, first things first, let's take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for that one heading towards the East Coast. And as you can see, it's still approaching most likely North Carolina there. It is a 40% chance of development now over the next five days. So a pretty decent chance there uh, actually that it's going to hit Southern North Carolina there, maybe uh, the Beaufort area, somewhere in there uh, as potentially a tropical depression, just a disturbance, or maybe even a tropical storm. Uh, so really there's a lot of things that can happen with this one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look first off at that African disturbance and then our two tropical storms. We're going to start talking about the spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance for those ones as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at that African disturbance that isn't there yet. And as you can see, over the next five days, there's a 60% chance that this one will develop. Uh, so I'll, although there isn't any chance on the two-day outlook, within the three days after that, there is a 60% chance uh, there. So we're going to really watch this one closely. I think after our three systems that are ongoing right now dissipate, this will be the next one to talk about. And obviously there will be more behind this one. Uh, so the tropics this time of year, just keep the topics coming. So we're basically going to be talking about the tropics throughout this month, probably maybe even into October. Uh, it's just that time of year. So let's go ahead and take a look at Tropical Storm Renee's cone forecast. And as you can see, it's a tropical storm, obviously, expected to possibly become a hurricane by Thursday morning. Do I think that that's likely? I wouldn't say likely. I think it's possible. I'm thinking that I think it's a little bit of a less chance than what the National Hurricane Center is saying. Uh, but there is a probably a 60% chance that one becomes a hurricane. We'll talk about that on the intensity guidance in just a little bit. Here's Tropical Storm Paulette. And as you can see... Uh, this one is expected to remain only a tropical storm, although I think this one looks better than the other one. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And also the direction says probably heading towards Bermuda, but I could see how this one with the current steering, the current steering pattern could turn more uh, westward and just be heading towards the east coast as well. So this one could potentially eventually pose a threat to the east coast. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at each of these on satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, and the intensity guidance. All right, so here we are taking a look first off at uh, Tropical Storm Rene, and as you can see, this one's looking pretty sloppy there. I think this one's just an area of scattered thunderstorms with some good spin to it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti models for this one. As you can see, this one is expected to take a direct northerly turn and then back eastward again. Basically, this one poses no threat to the east coast. There is obviously a slim chance that it does something unexpected, so I don't want to say none. Uh, but this one seems to really be a fish storm. It's going to have minimal to no impact on the Americas at all, actually. Matter of fact, here's your GEFS spaghetti model guidance. As you can see, pretty much same story, just heading back eastward, becoming eventually a pretty strong storm on this model. That's pretty interesting. Those reds are indicating a stronger storm, potentially even a Category 1 hurricane eventually, which is odd for the area it's in. Very interesting to say the least. Doesn't seem to pose a threat for the Americas, but potentially back towards Europe, this one might pose a threat. This is not unheard of, so we'll need to watch that closely, obviously. Here's your intensity guidance for this one, and as you can see, uh, there is a few models that keep it lower, and this was the same story yesterday, so there's about four or five models that keep it just way low in the tropical storm status. As you can see, it's hardly a tropical storm right now, which I kind of agree with, actually, based on satellite imagery. 
Many of these models have it reaching category one status there within the next 72 hours or three days. Uh, so we'll have to watch that closely. Again, I think it's actually maybe close to a 50-50 chance whether this one becomes a hurricane or a tropical storm, in my opinion. All right, now what we're going to do here is move on and we're going to take a look at Tropical Storm Paulette. And again, this one looks a lot better, in my opinion, than Renee. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Now, looking at satellite imagery, it's night and day. I think most of you are going to agree with me that this storm is the stronger of the two currently. Uh, and I think the potential is quite high moving forward for this one, actually. Very nice spin to it. Looks like a very strong tropical storm at this point, almost a hurricane uh, on on satellite imagery. Satellite imagery can, you know, give you false indications, but really this is looking like it has a nice spin to it. Very tall clouds. I'm very surprised that this one has apparently less potential than uh, Renee. I think we're going to see a, a shift in the models. It's definitely a stronger storm right now. We'll have to see what it does moving forward. Here is your spaghetti model guidance, and as you can see, basically heading in a northwesterly direction towards Bermuda, potentially the east coast eventually. But again, with the current steering pattern and where the high pressure systems are set up, we're seeing this with that system offshore of uh, the east coast near Bermuda, how it headed straight west. This one can do something very similar because it's going to be heading into similar areas. Usually we like to see the trend with what's happened with previous systems. Uh, and so that's going to lead me to believe that this system could follow a similar track. We could see this one eventually pose a threat for the southeast or the mid-Atlantic. We're going to want to watch that closely. Obviously, that's slim chances there because this one can do a lot of different things. But I just want to make, bring that out there that this one could eventually move into similar areas uh, to where we see that east coast system heading towards. Uh, and I think that's what the models are indicating as well. Now, it's a different story when we look at the GEFS model here. As you can see, they're very spread out. They have lots of different options for what can happen with this one. Uh, as you can see, we have some reaching very close to the east coast there, but most of these are turning into yellows, oranges, and even reds. Again, indicating a stronger tropical storm, maybe even category one or two here. Uh, so we're really, depending on if it's an orange or red, the deeper reds are obviously a stronger storm. So some of those deeper reds there on the more westerly tracks are uh, probably category one or two. Uh, those yellows and oranges most likely just a stronger uh, tropical storm, maybe category one. There's also some greens and blues mixed in there that we want to pay attention to as well because that's indicating a weaker storm. So as many as are showing stronger storm, there's also an equal amount showing weaker storms uh, for this one. All right, so keep that in mind. So again, just to recap, this one could potentially pose a threat to the East Coast, but it's not necessarily likely at this point just because of how many options are on the table. The percent chance for it hitting anywhere is quite low at this point because it can do so many different things. And when we haven't seen a storm form very well, we don't have a very solid idea. And I think that's why the spaghetti models are all over the place with this one. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the intensity guidance for Tropical Storm Paulette. All right, so here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance. And again, this is one that I definitely expect to uh, get a little bit higher as we move forward. As of right now, they show a higher end tropical storm. They show us at a mid-range tropical storm currently, just increasing in uh, strength just a tiny bit and then kind of dipping down uh, and then maybe back up eventually. You can see all the way out to about 132 to 168 hours. Uh, and I mean, that's approaching the five-day range, maybe beyond. So we're looking to maintain that tropical storm status well within that spaghetti model range that we saw. Uh, will this one become a hurricane? I, you know, I don't really think it's easy to say at this point. A lot of people were commenting like, can you just tell us when this could hit the East Coast and if it will hit the East Coast? The funny thing is, is that's the two things that we don't have the answer for right now. We can tell you what's going to happen within the next 48, 72 hours with it. Uh, but really beyond that, we can tell you what's possible, but we can't tell you what's for sure going to happen. These storms really are unpredictable. It's way different than a severe weather event or a snowstorm event. These uh, can move in an entirely different direction than you were expecting. They can intensify rapidly when you weren't expecting it like we saw uh, with Lara. So, I mean, lots and lots of different things can happen here. So we're going to want to watch this one closely. I think this is the biggest threat to the East Coast or the United States in general that we have out there right now. We obviously have one heading straight for the East Coast. I think it's going to be a weaker storm, though. That's the most imminent threat. But really, this one looks to eventually be the stronger of the two storms, obviously. All right. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that any of these systems will become hurricanes? And Lynn's 
Lynn Kinsman said, I believe Tropical Depression 18 will develop into a hurricane. And that was tropical, what, what is now Tropical Storm uh, Renee. And now the National Hurricane Center is saying that that one will become a hurricane. So that was a good call there by Lynn. Uh, so good job there. Uh, anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. But especially our Diamond patrons, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Alicia Davis, and then alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. If you'd like to support the channel and become a patron, you can do so by checking it out in the description in the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.